Generator Protection Let's start by reviewing the theory of operation of a synchronous AC generator presented earlier in this course prior to our discussion of generator protection. When current flows through a conductor, a magnetic field is formed. The higher the current flow, the stronger the magnetic field. An electromagnet can be formed by winding the conductor around a material such as iron, which has a low permeability or resistance to the flow of magnetic lines of flux. Depending on the direction of current flow, one end of the iron core will be a north pole, while the other is a south pole. The magnetic lines of flux will leave the north pole and flow to the south pole, returning to the north pole through the iron core. When magnetic lines of flux cut through a conductor, a voltage is induced in the conductor. The magnitude of the voltage is proportional to both the strength of the magnetic field and the speed with which the magnetic field cuts through the conductor. A single phase generator is composed of two major components, the exciter and the stator. The exciter is an electromagnet that rotates about its axis as shown. The stator is constructed from two electromagnets or poles wired in series to a load and, as the name implies, remains stationary. As the exciter rotates, its magnetic field cuts through the windings of the stator poles, inducing a voltage, and hence current, which will flow through the attached load, as shown. Large utility class generators produce three-phase alternating current, and so our single-phase generator is modified with the addition of two more pole pairs. The poles would be positioned such that the pole pairs are directly opposite each other, and planes running through any two pairs of poles will intersect at an angle of 120 degrees. This arrangement of poles forms the stator of a two-pole, three-phase generator. It is called a two-pole generator because the stator has two electromagnetic poles per phase. One side of each pair of windings is connected together, while the other side is connected to our three-phase load. If we plot a graph of the voltage, which appears across each of our load resistors against time as the exciter rotates through one revolution, we will see the waveforms shown. As the exciter rotates, the voltage induced in each pair of stator windings will be displaced by 120 electrical degrees from the other two waveforms, corresponding to the physical angular position of the stator windings. The resulting output is the desired three sine waves of equal amplitude, but with a 120 degree phase shift between them as shown. There are many sources of generation for electrical power, hydroelectric, nuclear, natural gas, and fossil fuels, just to mention a few. The mechanical systems used to convert these sources of energy into electrical power vary greatly in both physical construction and in mechanical limitations. For example, a hydraulic turbine is designed to withstand overspeeds that occur during startup and shutdown, while on the other hand, a steam turbine with base speeds in the 3200 RPM range will sustain damage during an overspeed condition even if for only a few seconds. From a protective relaying perspective, these vastly differing generating systems translate into a challenging problem. The operation of protective elements will generate a trip when protecting one style of generator, while on another, the element may either not be enabled, or, if enabled, may only generate an alarm. In addition to the mechanical arrangement, a typical generator system consists of a synchronization unit, an automatic voltage regulator, speed regulator, and a protective relay. Let's begin by looking at the synchronization unit. It's very important that within a power system, the power being generated matches the power being demanded by the network. The synchronization unit ensures that the frequency and phase angle of the generated power matches that of the rest of the network. It does this by sending a feedback signal to a primary generator speed regulator. For example, the gas valve controller of a natural gas generator, which will increase or decrease the speed of the generator. This increase and decrease is used to sync the generator's output frequency to the network. Once the generator is in sync, the synchronization circuits will provide an in-sync signal output. The automatic voltage regulator is also an essential component in matching the power being generated to the power demanded by the network. The AVR ensures that the generator's voltage magnitude matches that of the network. It does this by summing the negative feedback from the generator's output voltage with that of the network. The error signal is fed to the generator field current regulator. This increases or decreases the field strength so that the generator voltage magnitude matches that of the network. The last of these three components is a protective relay. A relay will be connected to the generator stator circuit and will provide generator stator protection in addition to backup protection for the AVR and the governor. 
In addition to these components, the correct selection of current transformers for the protective relay is an essential part of proper generator protection. The current transformers should be matched and a fault study conducted to determine the maximum CT primary fault current. With this information, the CTs chosen should be such that maximum voltage at the CT secondary terminals at the time of the fault is less than 50% of the CT knee voltage. Further information on CTs in general, along with specific CT selection principles, can be found within the Power Systems section.